Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to the final of the tournament. Today, the Firebugs fight it out. The United Kingdom's 7 inchers backed up by their mains, spew fire in the A group and got themselves into the finals. So did Austria-Hungary. Their 12 inch guns fire very quickly, set a whole bunch of fires, but they do have to close in a bit. Let's see which one of these Firebugs is going to win the finale and which designer gets the Bismarck. So this is what it's all about. This whole tournament has led up to the finals and the finals lead up to a winner. The winner gets the Bismarck. The Bismarck is a 7,000 piece project, 7,164 to be exact. Sponsored by the Block Zone, very kindly thank you for that. Um, the Block Zone has all sorts of these projects. You have various warships, um, they have a range of military vehicles. So if you are more inclined to build a Humvee, or uh, you want to get your own remote controlled even, T34, you can. Now be sure to enter code STEALTH when you exit your, or when you place your order, because that's going to give you a 10% discount. And since these are big projects, I mean, that's 2200 pieces. Uh, they do have some serious prices. So we're going to complete the order. And you go to the results screen, you enter code STEALTH. In my case, it has already been added. And you get a 10% discount, which is nice. And you'll also be supporting the channel. So go over to the block zone, linked down below in the description, enter code STEALTH if it doesn't automatically do that, and get yourself 10% discount on a block zone project. Time for the finale. I'm going to be running this battle three times. It's going to be a best out of three. This is because both of these ships very heavily favor RNG, and you can run the same battle a couple times and get pretty different outcomes. So I've decided to run it three times, and if you don't like it, take it up with the organizing committee, i.e. me, although you might not get very far. So, let's see. We have Hussar, Elizabeth Petsnack, and Jupiter. They're all blasting away with their 12 inches. The Austro-Hungarians tend to be more vulnerable at range, because their high explosive somehow only gets selected when they close to about 17 or 16 kilometer range. The 7 inchers from the British are just outside of range, but the British are closing in. And once the British start closing in, those 7 inchers will light up the Austro-Hungarian Navy like they have never experienced before. The British main guns are already going off. The British mains, well, I'd say aren't that deadly, but that's not entirely true. They are 15 inch guns, they have a lot of firepower and they are able to join their smaller 7-inch brethren into setting a whole bunch of fires aboard some of these ships. The point is, though, most of the time, the ships, well, both, fire uh, armor piercing at long range, which could, for the British, be bad news. It's not necessarily so that they're going to burn down, because the British have a critical weakness. They tend to flood. And when they flood, it goes pretty quick, because flooding is something that these ships are not only uh, quite weak with, i.e. they flood easily, but they also keep flooding. And that's how a 34,000 ton battlecruiser can still take down something almost twice her size, as the British battlecruisers are coming in over 62, 64,000 tons. They're really heavy ships. The British are also potentially at grave risk at short range from the Austro-Hungarian torpedoes. But the Austro-Hungarians are going to have to work very hard to get this close to the enemy. That 65 knot torpedo might cause crippling amounts of damage to the British, especially again in the flooding department. But getting there is going to require getting to 10 kilometers and most likely less. Because the AI doesn't like to send torpedoes unless they seem absolutely confident that they can hit. During that time as they are trying to get into range, they will be subjected to a hail of 7-inch high explosive fire. Uh, probably not something the torpedo launchers will be able to survive. Now the British have already been able to deal quite a substantial amount of damage. It is the 15-inchers, the ones that I said aren't that dangerous. Elizabeth Petsnack would probably disagree, as she has already lost 17% of her structural integrity. And the British ships much like the Austro-Hungarians, are really quite accurate and can send ser ser well, pretty serious volleys. It's not firing nearly as quickly as the Austro-Hungarians, to be sure, but uh, those 15-inchers, 
and even partial pins, they hit hard. Do the British have any real damage on their own? Um, some. I suspect this is the Empress, and the Austro-Hungarians are still subjecting her to an armor-piercing treatment. The range has closed to 15 kilometers, so it could be just a matter of time now until the British start taking a whole lot of high explosive fire. Right now, damage 2k for the British, 800, oh, 1200 for the Austro-Hungarians. Once these things switch to high explosive, it's, well, it's not GG, but it's a very, very dangerous development for the British. Pat's neck is flooding. Jupiter has a good accuracy there of 13%. Hussar still firing armor piercing. But now with 18, 19% chance to hit. I'm waiting for a flooding on the British part. It's just partial pens. It's main belt, fore deck, aft belt, main belt. They're lucky that they're just getting partial pens and not actual full pens or the British would be flooding. Austro-Hungarians at twice the amount of damage taken that they've dished out now. Torpedo range is getting closer and closer and closer. We're th about three kilometers outside of torpedo range now. I, wouldn't be sus or I would suspect that the British have... Yeah, they got a solid chance to pen the Austro-Hungarians. They got a good belt there. 14.6 plus 163%. At this range, impenetrable to the British. But the closer the British get, the weaker, or at least the more vulnerable, that belt is going to get. It looks like the pet's neck is in dire straits here, and she's not alone. Jupiter is now also taking a lot of fire. Pet's neck burning in several locations. The fire bugs experience the heat themselves as the British 7 inchers work their way right to burning down the Pets Neck. And look at the damage. It's 5,600 for the 15 inchers and about half for the 7 inchers. And those 7 inchers can catch up very, very quickly. Much to the Elizabeth Pets Neck's chagrin because she's forced to flee. Turning around, the Austro-Hungarians lose DPS and will not be able to use their high explosive spam, at least from one ship. I was wondering how the hell they did that, but they got three turrets turned around, only the fourth turret is not. Twelve inches are working hard. Are they... No, we're still armor-piercing. Well, they are taking down the British ship. They got her down to about half health. How are we doing for the torpedoes? Oh, we're about to be in torpedo range. Here come the fires. But it's still armor-piercing. If the Austro-Hungarians had switched to high explosive, this battle... Well, it might not be over yet, but I'd say the British would be in, um, in a much warmer condition. There's a couple of partial pens, it's not really going to cost them the game. If the Hussar is able to launch her torpedoes, the British are going to have an interesting experience dodging all of that. And I don't believe that they're particularly maneuverable, these ships. Hussar, however, not launching her torps yet. She is considering it. She has her torpedoes locked onto a target. Oh boy, that hurt. There goes a quarter of your structural integrity. Your rudder and some floodings. And somehow still the Austro-Hungarians are firing armor piercing? The whole tournament, these guys spam high explosive. And when it comes down to it in the finals, they use armor piercing. Curious. I wonder if this is something the AI does because they know something about the armor? Or because they're on the, the green team, the blue team, if you will? I have no idea. There have been some comments saying, well, you should run a battle from both sides, seeing if there is a difference, because sometimes the, the red team, if you will, the AI-controlled team, I mean, this is also AI-controlled, but this is fully AI-controlled. They get an advantage. They turn faster, they uh, might be able to spot torpedoes without actually having them on sonar. Stuff like that. 
Which I think is a fair point, because there's so much that the game just does not tell you about what the AI gets in bonuses. Ooh, Petsnack is getting torpedoes damaged aboard her ship. And the firebugs are still resorting to armor piercing. Soon they're going to run out though. They only got 113 left. 171 on the Petsnack. Jupiter has been firing more because the Petsnack was turning around. The damage is still pretty even. We're looking at 11k for the Austro-Hungarians, 14k damage done by the 15k damage done by the British. But it seems that some of these British ships are far too quiet. They don't... There we go. That's the 7-inchers firing. I was going to go, where are the 7-inchers? But they're getting there. Petsnack has lost a quarter of her crew. Hussar has lost 9% and the Jupiter has lost 16%. Oh, we got the Jupiter. No. Yeah, there we go. Jupiter firing high explosive now. Could, could be a game changer if she continues to burn the British ships. The British ships, which still have not taken a flooding. Surprisingly so. Petsnack is going to have all sorts of issues real soon. I think we might see the Petsnack getting burned down. Oh, and there's the 15-inch shells rampaging through the ship. Oh, boy. And there she goes. Extensive fire. Yeah, the irony isn't lost. The amount of ships that the Austro-Hungarian ships have burned down. And then they met the British. But Jupiter is working very hard on doing the same thing to an almost full health British battlecruiser. That's five fires set with one salvo. And if the Hussar is able to join that fight, and she might not be, but she did launch torps. If she's able to join that fight and put more fires onto the British ship, maybe they can knock out a full health British battlecruiser. Something else that would help the Austro-Hungarian cause right now is if the Jupiter turned a little bit to port and sent her torpedoes. Because she has them. The launchers are ready. And those torpedoes can cause a lot of issue for the British. The British have anti-torp 3. Triple hull bottom and reinforced bulkhead 2. They got anti-flood 2. But they have many bulkheads, not maximum bulkheads, which does leave them a little vulnerable. Jupiter, however, might not live long enough to get those torps away. She's lucky to have ricocheted some of those shells, but that was a lot of damage. And she switched with her sister to setting fires aboard the Achilles, which instantly takes seven fires, and the British damage control parties are working hard to put that out. It looks like the British might be aware of the incoming torpedo issue. I have sonar one, and these torpedoes aren't particularly quiet. Uh, oh, we got a launch from Jupiter. Unfortunately, I don't think they're taking into account that these British battlecruisers are now maneuvering to get out of the way of the first salvo. The question is, can they do that fast enough? And I think in case of the ocean, no. She's going to turn to starboard. She's, well... Oh! Achilles! Extensive fire! Well, well, well. Well, well, well. We still have three Austro-Hungarian ships. Um, they're really badly damaged, but they're still functional. Now it's the ocean that is turning around. These torpedoes are not going to hit anything. The second salvo is not going to hit anything either. Jupiter is going to be reloading for a long time. Oh, sorry, we have... Yeah, the pet snack is sinking. We got two versus two. Oh, the Hussar is still firing our piercing. Jupiter also firing our piercing. What are you doing? Because the Brits are not going to wait. They will take you down. There's blood in the water right next to the torpedoes. And they know it. Fortunately for the British, they're still able to use their 7-inch guns. Is it possible that the Austro-Hungarians can take out the British crews? We've got 20% loss on the part of the Empress. 14% on the 
Well, it was 14. It's now 16 aboard the ocean. Three fire set. Still armor piercing. What is going on with these ships? Ooh. That got a little precarious there for the British. More crew loss. Damage control is starting to wither as the crew dies. And on top of everything, they got flooding now. More pench. Ooh, there's more coming in. No flooding there. Structural integrity and buoyancy on Jupiter are dropping quickly. And I think she's going down. Yep. Oh, there's a 15 in salvo again. Oh, 2% buoyancy. Jupiter is done for. The British have only one ship left to take down. The Austro-Hungarian Hussar are the only one defending the Austro-Hungarian honor. Can they get it done? Maybe. Because Ocean is in a bad way. Lots of fire. Lots of flooding. And the Austro-Hungarian secondaries... Well, let's say they're doing what they can with those 3 inches and 2 inches. Not even the 2 inches, actually. Oh, the 2 inches are just on the edge of their operational range. This is going to get tight. I think they might be able to burn down the ocean here. Which is a really weird thing to say. But leave it to the Austro-Hungarian firebugs to burn down anything, including an ocean. Oh, that salvo's gonna miss entirely. You're gonna switch fire? Oh, why? They've decided to change their target to the Empress. But the secondaries are still adding more fires to ocean. British ships are going to collide. Ooh! The Empress is down! It's a one versus one. Ocean versus Petsnack. Sorry, Hussar. Hussar versus Ocean. Damn, they got rid of the Empress pretty quick there. Ocean, having lost 25% of her crew. And she is stern towards the ship, so she only has one 15-incher and, well, virtually none of her secondaries. I think... The Austro-Hungarians are going to take it. 26% crew lost. The British battlecruiser is turning to starboard to try and get more of her main guns to bear. The SAR cannot rely upon her torpedo launchers anymore. They've all been destroyed. Ocean is one big plume of fire at this point. Oh, there comes another salvo. Only one fire was set? Wow, you got away lucky there. The 12 inches have reloaded and another 16 seconds. All they need to send more high explosive and more fires. There's three more fires aboard the British. Hussar is fighting some fires, but at least she's not flooding. Although... Based on the condition of the ship, you could be persuaded otherwise. Flooding aboard the British ship. 29% of her crew is dead. It's going to be so close, this one. There's not a whole lot of fires that they got from that salvo. 30% of the crew is gone. 75% of their damage control is remaining. Another fire going up towards the bow, most likely. Two, three fires set. The British still have 15-inch guns with 90% accuracy at times. But the reload is dwindling. They're now at 39 seconds. And as more of the crew gets taken down... They will start suffering from worse and worse and worse reload. It's now or never for the British. If they want to take down the Hussar, they better land this next volley. It looks like they might. Oh, the ocean sinks! Ooh, look at the damage to the Hussar. That was additional flooding and fires. Oh, God. 
These ships are very, very, very close to each other in capabilities. So that's one. No, I will not play it again. I'm going to switch the sides. So the British are going to be on the blue side, if you will, and Austria-Hungary on the other side. This was so close. So close. One point to Austria-Hungary. If they win this one, then it's GG for the British, and the British come in second. Unfortunately, there is no uh, victory in second place. There is no points there. So the British better win this. Using those 15 inches to land devastating blows on the Austro-Hungarians from afar before they're able to close the distance and burn them down. Now, I'm very interested to see if the British are going to be subjected to more high explosive rain this time around. Because now the Austro-Hungarians are on the red team. The, again, fully AI controlled team. If that is true, then it seems like the Austro-Hungarian, or sorry, that the AI does favor different types of ammunition choices at different ranges. Right now, at 18 kilometer range, they're perfectly happy firing armor piercing. The seven inches from the Brits are firing high explosive. So the Austro-Hungarians are already getting subjected to some fire damage. But so far, most of the accuracy for the British just isn't there. Not yet. Wait, they destroyed a torpedo or a launcher? They destroyed a launcher? That's really good news for the British, because that port forward launcher on the Austro-Hungarian ship is dead. Not that the torpedoes really had an impact, no pun intended. Holy crap, this thing is going down. Seven fires. 40% accuracy for the British right now. There's another torpedo destruction. It's basically a repeat of the first. Destroy torpedo again. This thing is getting... There she goes. Less than three and a half minutes is all it took the British. I guess we pissed them off because... Uh, Devastation, Empress and Warrior have claimed first blood in three and a half minutes. That's all they needed. And the Austro-Hungarians, well, they've done some damage. The Empress has taken some structural. But beyond that, they got nothing to show for it. The range is now about 14 kilometers, depending on what target you select for the Austro-Hungarians. I am very fearful for the longevity of the Austro-Hungarians here. This is gonna go <laughs> really poorly for them. And I just can't quite explain why. Because, you know, it's the same battle. It's the same ships. It's just seemingly a different outcome. Austro-Hungarian ship was maneuvering violently there, causing a delay in her fire. All the while, she takes damage, and I think her secondary tower has been destroyed. The torpedo launchers are still functional, the guns are still functional. But she's taking so much fire damage. Look at that, the British 7 inch is doing... Well, two-thirds of what the 15 inches are doing. Five fires. Damage to the main tower. Torpedo launcher is getting destroyed. And she's gone! In another... Pretty much three minutes, the British have taken down another ship. Holy crap, I thought the Austro-Hungarians would have it. But this is suddenly very one-sided. Another torpedo launcher bites the dust. Now the Austro-Hungarians have nowhere near the DPS to take this thing down. They might be able to burn down a ship, but I think the battle is going to be over before 10 minutes have passed. 11 fires. There's another two, three, flooding. They're desperately trying to do some damage against Devastation, but the Devastation isn't having it. Sure, she's taking some fire. See, that hurts. That's a pen and a flooding. But the Austro-Hungarians are... <laughs> very, very quickly eradicated. Which I really like, because 
that means we're gonna have a third round. It's gonna be one more. Boom! Gone! Less than 10 minutes is all it took the British to exact their revenge upon the Austro-Hungarians. So, once more... Once more... We're gonna go back to the previous state. British versus Austria-Hungary. And let's see what this third round is going to yield. Is it gonna go to the British? Is it gonna go to the pet's neck? Let's see. Let's see. Long range fire booting up. I really have no idea what's gonna happen. Because the British somehow pulled some mysteriously good accuracy out of nowhere in that last battle. And, um, I mean, in about 20 seconds, in the previous battle, they will have taken down a ship. Sorry, in about a minute. And right now, I'm just not seeing any chance of that. It's not even close. But the damage between the Austro-Hungarians and the British is close. Ooh, that took out the main tower for the pet snack. That's gonna hurt. Loss of a main tower means all sorts of debuffs. You generally don't see them, though. She's gonna have worse damage control. She's gonna have worse accuracy. Worse aiming time. It's bad news all over. And I think she... Yeah, she lost a torpedo launcher on her port side. Boink. Ricochet. 18 kilometers out. If the British... Keep up the pressure on the pet's neck. They can win. Pet's neck turning back a little bit. <sighs> that was a lot of potential damage that she dodged right there. That was potentially disastrous, but so far, <laughs> she's still there. The British still getting subjected to armor-piercing ammunition. Really, if these guys switch to high explosive... Ooh... British are starting to take some wounds. We're 3.2 for the British, for 2.6 for the Austro-Hungarians. But they just leveled the score, 3.1 for 3.2. And I think the British are a little bit worse than the Austro-Hungarians at the moment. Can they take down the Empress? Ooh, that hurt though. That hurt. Flooding. Marshall pens. See, these armor-piercing rounds might not do a whole lot of damage, but sure is a lot of those rounds. And it's adding up to the Brits. There's another 670 damage. Next salvo coming in. That mostly missed. Pet's neck is hurting, though. She is badly, badly burned. Her crew has lost 18%. She might not be able to take these fires for much longer. Oh, there goes her fire control. That's really bad news, because that's your accuracy gone. But the pet's next crew, veteran as they are, can still make it work. They can still use 30% chance to hit shells. And they're firing high explosive. And so is Kaiser, and so is Drache. That's bad news for the British, as it's also the British warship over here. Most likely Empress that's burning to a crisp, and she's first to go! And there goes the pet's neck! Oh, man. So now we've got a full health, two full health Brits, and two full health Austro-Hungarians. <laughs> okay. Who's gonna be cooking the books next? Who is going to be taking so much fire that they can't handle the heat? Austro-Hungarians still very much devoted to the high explosive party. The British 7 inches trying to repay the favor against Kaiser. Sorry, no, against, I think, Drache. Yep. Drache is now the main target for the Brits. It's not looking good for the British ship. It's not looking good. There's a lot of fires on her bow. There's another few. 
The Austro-Hungarian Drache is taking beating after beating. And there's the 15-inch volleys. That could be really painful because you're pretty broadside on. Yeah, there you go. Flooding, rudder damaged, lots of fires. Drache now only able to get to about half the accuracy that the Kaiser has. There's two fires. That fully missed? Damn. Bad news for Austria-Hungary. When it comes to structural integrity, I'd say the British are ahead. Because they really managed to pull a number on the Drache. But the amount of fires that the, the Austro-Hungarians can set means that structural integrity for the Brits... It almost doesn't matter. Because you can have 99% structural integrity, but if I overwhelm you with extensive fires, you're gone anyway. The torpedoes might come into play here, which would force the British to turn around, potentially aiding the Austro-Hungarians, which they do need. Because Drache... Ooh. 30% structural integrity left on this ship. Surprisingly, she isn't rolling over that much, and she's still able to continue fighting. If she wants to make some final contribution, torpedoes would be nice. But... Yeah, she only has one set of uh, torpedoes on the starboard side available. The rest of them are gone. For some reason, Kaiser turns away from the fight. I don't know why. It's looking really good for the British. Because they got the Drache. Can they take down... Can the Austro-Hungarians take down the favorite? Maybe. Oh, they switched fire! They switched fire to the Colossus. And they switched fire again. Dude, if you keep switching fire like this, I don't think you'll win anything. Whoa, eight fires in one salvo. Next salvo. Another five. But they're getting hurt so bad, so fast. They're burning down, structural integrity is dropping, buoyancy is dropping. But the favorite... <sighs> She's lucky that a lot of those shells splashed in the water. I guess she could have been taken out. It's hard to see because the British ships have a lot of compartments, but... No, don't switch fire now. She's switching fire back to the Colossus. You idiot. You need to stay on the favorite. If you switch fire now, you're wasting all of those fires that you set on the favorite. Colossus, one whole fire. So far, the British have done 38,000 points of damage. The British, sorry, the Austro Hungarians, 12. But the Austro-Hungarians, with only 12k damage, did manage to almost take out two battlecruisers. Up until the point where they switched fire. Now she's switching back to the favorite. Her structural integrity is 71% and dropping pretty quickly. Favorite has lost 17% of crew and with that some capability to control the fires. We have a torpedo launch from favorite. Sorry, Kaiser. Oh, the Kaiser's gone! She got burned. She got burned. Yikes. That is the Austro-Hungarians out of the fight. And so it is decided. The British have won the finals. They won two out of three rounds. Uh, one round they got taken out, although Austria-Hungary survived by a slither of health. The second round they came back very hard and immediately destroyed the Austro-Hungarian ships. And the third time, it got close, but they got it done. So, congratulations to Angel Min. You've won the tournament, and with that, you've won the Bismarck. Now, he did put in a comment that he might donate it to the second place, which would be Austria-Hungary, but I'll leave that up to him. Angel Min, please send me an email at stealth at stealth17gaming.com, and we can discuss how you're going to be able to get your Bismarck. Everybody, thank you for watching. Thank those who sent in all their ships for sending them in. Thank the contestants for joining the fight. And I hope you really enjoyed the tournament. Thank you for the Block Zone for sponsoring the project and for donating the Bismarck to the winner.
Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon for a new series.